Right, what I'd like to do now is change gear, so to speak. We're going to bring the tests right up to date. In other words, by up to date, I mean these tests have been developed, if you like, over years and years of looking at closed loop control vehicles. And the purpose of this is to evaluate completely the entire engine management functionality with just two simple inputs. The two inputs we're going to look at are air mass meter voltage. That's a transition from the air mass meter as the engine is driven through what we call a wide open throttle test. And basically what we do is warm the car up fully, obviously for safety, ensure that it's fully enclosed loop, lambda sensor is completely active, and basically we bury the throttle pedal on the floor, we get a full profile output from the air mass meter, we lift off, and the time period we conduct that test is around two seconds. We also then add to that the actual output from the lambda sensor. Now this confirms then precisely across that, that wide open throttle exactly what's happening to the fueling. And of course lambda sensor reports oxygen content in the exhaust. The purpose of this is if there's any anomalies with combustion, and I use the word anomalies rather than misfire because anomalies could be poor injection, spray pattern, inadequate delivery, poor fuel flow, um, um, air uh, ingress in the, in the fuel supply, cavitation as we call it. So any anomaly at all with ignition or fueling is actually reported back from the, from the lambda sensor across the wide open throttle test. So let's do a bit of talk and chalk on the board, explain how we're going to set the profile of test up, what the trigger is, why it's placed in such a position, and then we'll conduct the test for real. So let's just take a look at the flip chart. First of all, the air mass meter is essentially a 5 volt component. At idle, we'll have somewhere around 0.8 to 1 volt. So we'll have a, a fairly smooth transitional output. When we initially open the throttle, we get a transient increase in voltage. That's the initial increase in airflow across the sensing element. This produces an initial transient peak. We then have, in effect, well, we actually have then a drop of pressure. We go from a negative pressure in the manifold to atmospheric pressure, and we get a lean void. In other words, we get a, a moment's pause or hesitation in the flow of air across the sensor. So we get a drop. Then, as the air increase, as the engine increases speed, the air increase across the air, uh, air mass meter then reports back an increase in voltage up to a peak maximum. And we're going to talk about the actual value of this as well. This is very, very important. We then lift off and we get, in effect, closed throttle and a rapid reduction of flow of air across the air mass meter. The signal drops rapidly. Two things then happen. The idle air control device, in this case a stepper, which is actually drive-by-wire, so it's actually a drive-by-wire throttle control, <coughs> kicks in suddenly, so it's got to capture the engine. But we also have a recirculation valve, because this is a, tur a turbocharged car, and the recirculation valve then opens to release all that compressed air in a recirculation back into the intake. So, in our case, we'll get a secondary spike here through recirc, and then a gradual smoothing off back to natural idle. That's what I expect to see. The peak voltage, this point here, is absolutely critical. If this air mass meter is functioning correctly, we should have 4.7 volts. Any less than that, we're going to have potentially a lean car. We have, a, obviously, a, um, a threshold somewhere around 4.5 to 4.7 is OK. So I would expect to see 4.7, so we can measure that on the, on the screen. After this, we're going to then add lambda. Now, I'm going to save the explanation of lambda because I want to conduct this test first. I also want to set a trigger up. The trigger is the device which stabilizes this image or captures this image on screen for us. And I want to set a trigger up so that it's actually sat there waiting. Um, in effect, I don't want any image to be displayed on the screen until we actually open the throttle. That means that this test can be conducted singular with no help at all, although I have got David in the car to help. Um, but you can conduct this test all on your own. This is a drive-by-wire car. You cannot increase engine speed under the bonnet. You have to go to the throttle pedal. And indeed, that's where you should increase the engine speed always. So I'm going to set a trigger up with a threshold of around 2 volts. And then what will happen, there is a theoretical hidden trap on the set of crosshairs. When the voltage crosses that threshold, the image will be drawn and captured on the screen. So it's around 2 volts with an offset of about 30% across the screen. So the, the entire image then is displayed on the screen. So um, that's what we're going to do. Let's now prepare for that and then conduct the test 
and then we'll come back to the flip chart and then add lambda. It's also upside down lambda, so that also brings very much up to date the actual component functionality on this vehicle. I think it's important just to add to the comments I've already made that this setup has been in, achieved in uh, a fully manual format. In other words, I've taken over total control of all the parameters. Uh, the three essential parameters that we're speaking about is voltage range, 0 to 5 volts, and that's been set manually from channel A range. Time base. Now, time base, the entire duration across the screen is approximately two seconds. Um, so, the actual um, time base has been established by a little bit of trial and error. In other words, what I want to see is a large enough image across the screen that's acceptable to me, and this is a, a personal um, choice, um, without being too large or too small. I want to see all the critical events. In other words, are there any anomalies in the signal? And to do that, I want the image probably occupying at least two-thirds of the screen, um, both in terms of horizontal and vertical dimensions. But it's all been done manually without using any presets from the automotive uh, selection box. So, brief pause, and then we'll conduct the test. Right, the first important thing is, I need to coordinate with David, because he, in effect, is my throttle pedal. Uh, as I say, it's drive-by wire. I cannot control the throttle from under the bonnet, so I'm going to rely on David. It's important that the car is fully warmed up. We've taken some time out of camera to actually warm the car up. And the reason for that is that the lambda sensor must be completely active, because this is a vital component of, of fuel control and without that being active we're not going to get an accurate report of what's actually taking place in the exhaust pipe. Bear in mind the lambda sensor on this car is broadband which means it's upside down therefore the voltage transition when it's rich is in the low region which is completely the opposite of the normal uh, zirconia dioxide sensor. So we're warming the car up. Uh, I'm just going to check that we haven't pre-triggered on the scope uh, so we're starting with a, with a clean screen waiting for the first sample from the uh, air mass meter. What we've done is we've conducted a few sample um, tests. Sometimes you get what we call pre-triggering um, due to noise. Uh, noise can be caused by ignition, um, induction, uh, interference if you like into the probe. So try and keep your probe well away from ignition. If you do get a bit of pre-triggering, all you need to do is three or four samples from the air mass meter and select the frame or the sample on, on screen which you're happy with. So I'm going to ask Dave now to conduct a full wide open throttle test. Let's see the profile. Thank you, Dave. 